Hills Entertainment. Ever since the day I was born, I felt the city embrace me, you know what I mean? And uh, for a city this tough, this strong, this, you know, this abundance, everybody in Philly is together. I mean, they say the city of brotherly love, and obviously with all the gun violence and things of that sort, it might not seem that way, but it really is, man. It's a it's a wonderful city, man. So, and I, that's why I'm so like in love with it because it taught me so much. Everything I know, everything that I've been through in my life, I've always reverted back to my Philadelphia roots to get through something, to help me out with something, um, situations, relationships, football, especially. You know, everything that that, that I've known in my life, this city has taught me. So. Welcome, Eagles, everywhere to the Eagles Insider Podcast. Presented by Lincoln Financial Group, Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you once again, hoping that everyone is healthy, safe, practicing social distancing. We will get through this together, everyone. We do our parts. You heard at the very top there are some highlights from Will Parks. A new Eagles safety, he's here, back home in Philadelphia. One year deal. And we'll talk to him and get to know him in just a bit. We will also hear a little later in the show from Eagles tight end Zach Ertz. Well, how is he getting through this coronavirus situation? He's in Philadelphia. The city is pretty much on lockdown. He's in it just like we all are. He's certainly doing his part and then some in the community. And we'll debut a feature here on the Eagles Insider Podcast. We'll take a look at the Eagles position by position from the Journey to the Draft podcast, Fran Duffy and Chris McPherson, and we'll talk about the safety position. Appropriate, right? We've got Will Parks here. Will Parks went to public high school in Philadelphia, University of Arizona, has played with the Denver Broncos the last four seasons. Over the weekend, agreed to terms on a deal with the Eagles. He's coming on back to Philadelphia, and he couldn't be happier. Let's meet the newest Eagles safety, Will Parks. Uh, you've been an Eagles fan, Will, your whole life. Do you, do you remember players yeah. very bright? Yes, sir. My, uh, you know, I, Brian, I go to Brian Westbrook, Troy Vincent, Little Shepard, Asante Samuel, T.O. We had his friend, B. Dog, Donovan McNabb. You know, I can go on and on and on. Michael Vick, Sean Jackson. I mean, just the, the, the <laughs> franchise. You know, the, the, the franchise that had multiple, a multitude of uh, 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 superstar players and, and, and and hard work and things of that sort, man. So I've been a fan. Remember that Lee Dalt hit against Bubba Frank? You know, that's one of my favorite plays. So, you know, it's just, um, and it's just it's a lot of history, man. I just never got a chance to get to a game when I was a kid. You know, we just didn't have it. But um, I, we, I went to the recent game when you guys played the Vikings two years ago in the Super Bowl run. And um, I was, that was my first time actually in the stands watching, us, watching the Eagles. And I was with my dad, who was a fan of the other side. So um, that, was, that, was, that was pretty good. <laughs> So you wait, wait. So you're sitting there. Are you sitting there rooting for the Eagles, even though you're a member of the Broncos? Yeah, we we didn't make, we didn't make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I no. Hey, man, I get that. Eagles yeah. in your heart. Eagles in your heart from the start. I yeah, mean, Bryce Bryce uh, Bryce Shrag was on the team at the time, and he, had, he knew I was in the city, and he had gave me two tickets, so it was pretty awesome. Very good. Hey, it's interesting. Um, the way the safety position has changed, even since Brian Dawkins played, right? Like you're a student of the game. You have to be a lot more versatile these days to be a safety, don't you? Yeah, man. Um, it's definitely there's definitely what teams are looking for. You know, I would say, um, the, the game has definitely changed, man. You got these tight ends that's moving like receivers now. You have these backs that are moving like tight ends. You know, so you need that kind of that that guy who can uh, be able to be interchangeable so quick throughout the game in so many different ways. So, um, and and that's one of my abilities is being able to adapt and fly and. And being able to just understand that you know the game is changing, you got to be able to change with the game. Why are you so adaptable? What what makes you have the skill set to do that? Uh, this is the way I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's it's, it's, it's my my game has pertained to some of my life. You know what I mean? I've been um uh, I've been in one part of, one part of the city and another part. And after that, you gotta go to school. You, know, you gotta meet these new people. You gotta go. Uh, you, you gotta meet the, the doctor or the nurse at the school. And then if you change schools, you gotta meet a whole new different group of people. You gotta meet a new coach. You gotta meet the defensive coach. You gotta meet. You know, it's just a whole bunch of different things that you know that I've been doing in my life that allow me to. And I always been interchangeable as a high school football player. You know what I mean? So um, just being able to just have that asset um, has definitely helped me out in my career thus far. Will, why was the why was the Eagles the right choice for you in free agency? You you had other opportunities to go to other teams. 
Yeah, um, you know, definitely, man. Um, uh, uh, not to take any away from any of the other things, but, uh, you know, the, the situation here was perfect, you know what I mean? I'm um, an organization uh, that just <clears throat> won, a, won a bowl two years ago, um, but but it's definitely back on the rise, you know, we got, uh, yeah. man, I love Christ, and I think, I think, I think, I, I mean, he almost had, a, he would have been MVP if he didn't get hurt, you know what I mean? So, um, just to have that type of guy in the, in the room and leave a shit in the herb, a lot of the bottom, um, and, and then the bond, and you know, new guys going in, Barry Slay, I've been cool with him for like a, a, a year before we even, you know, ended up on the same team this year. So, uh, you know, it's just a lot of things that went into consideration, man. And having Jim Schwartz as a D coordinator and, you know, how we have a GM. I talked to Coach M, who was a new defensive back coach, and, you know, we have a lot of mutual ties. So, um, it was just a more of a fit field thing and just to have enough opportunity to just prove myself, man, prove my work and prove that I can do anything to help this team win the game. You, you uh, I spoke to Rodney earlier this week. He mentioned that you guys have a common trainer that you work with. What kind of stuff had Rodney told you about the Eagles and, and being part of this football team, being playing football in the city professionally? Oh, man, um, uh, we, we haven't talked too much about, you know, that specific aspect, um, aspect but me and Rodney, we've had conversations about the fans, you know what I mean? I love the fans. You know, they have to let you know when you're doing good. But, boy, if you do bad, it's over until you do good again. And I love that attitude because that, you know, that brings the best out of you. You know, I love criticism, you know, and things of that sort. But, the, you know, the, the, they're passionate about their Eagles. Um, they don't care about their Eagles. They will fight you, kick you, crawl, and things of that sort. And that's the kind of attitude. That's the kind of spirit you want, you know, as a football player. You want, you know, a, a fan base that you, you'll thrive off of. And I think that's what – I think that's the biggest thing that you, you have to get discussed, man. Like, they thrive off the energy out there at the link, man. I can't, I'm excited there. I can't wait. Well, just a couple more here. Wondered um, what you think of the defense as you know it. What you think, you know, how you think you can fit in and, and help the Eagles. Oh man, I you know I have conversations with Jim, Coach, and man, just um, the biggest thing is you know the, the way they, the way the versatility is throughout the whole defensive back. But I mean, I think we have a lot of guys um, back there who are interchangeable. Not <clears throat> not just you know me myself and Mr. Mills, man. You know Jalen being able to. Uh, play corner man and, and and go inside and up top and you know things of that sort. I think that's the biggest thing is just you know you, you don't have a bunch of sitting ducks you know back there. You know you have a guy who's smart who's been a uh, one of the best defense coordinators in the game for a very long time. So you know I think just having that guy and having a, the staff that he has to put us in the best position to succeed, man. I think that's what that's the biggest thing. Now, Will, last one. You're not moving back into your home, right? Like you're going to get your own place, or are you going to do the? Uh... What was the name of the running back with the with the Broncos? Lindsey, Philip Lindsey. Oh, uh, no, see, Lindsey, he's crazy as hell. He, I would never live with my mom. No way. Oh, my God, that is not happening, dude. She is not getting on my nerves. Neither is my dad. But I, I've, I've been here. See, the people, see, thing is, man, I've been in Philadelphia for the last two or three off seasons. Like, I have a house here, um, you know, a little bit out of the way. So, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the city a lot, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, just having that, 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 that feeling just of, uh, Obviously, I'm going to get a new career here and there, but I, I'm in the city, and I, I think I can do pretty well, man. I'm not worried about that. How excited are your parents that they can watch you every week play in the NFL? Um, uh, Man, it's a, it's, it's a dream come true for my, my, my dad, for sure. You know, he, he called me as soon as it happened. He was like, yo, man, like, this is it. You know, this is the time. You know, everything is, is right here. You just got to put in the work. You got to prove yourself. Well, my mom. You know, she. I think she's the biggest Eagles fan out there. I mean, her whole crib is packed out of Eagles fans. Like, I want, I'm gonna go there and take a picture and show you guys because it's absolutely insane. You know how 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 excited she is to have me here, and you know, not just have her son here, but have her son running around down there in South Philly, man. She, you know, she can't wait for that. Will, please text me that photo. We will get that on social media, and we will make that thing rock. Your mom will be will be loving it. I can't believe your dad's a Vikings fan, though. That that's got to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, it, 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 he grew up with it, you know what I mean. So I, I, you can't knock him for that. <laughs> <laughs> he, deals, he deals with a lot of heat. Like soon as I made up, soon as I, uh, you know, said I was coming here. Oh my God, he said he had about 106 text messages saying, "Oh, you coming over? You gonna go, you gonna turn to the green side, man?" And he tried a little bit, but he'd be alright, man. His son on the Eagles, man. He, he should be excited. That's <laughs> exciting. We're all excited. Will, thank you so much. Welcome to Philadelphia as a member of the Eagles. Can't wait to meet you at the Novacare Complex. Man, appreciate you, Dave. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Take care. Thanks to Will there. Will stay in the locker room, if you will, here. Zach Ertz, Eagles tight end. Making a difference in the community. 
very aware of the difficulties that everyone is feeling during this coronavirus global pandemic. So he and his wife, Julie, the Ertz Family Foundation, did something about it. Here's Zach Ertz. How are you doing? Yep. Yeah, you know, just about the same, trying to uh, gather more information as we go, you know. It's more the unknown fact that's kind of been the biggest uh, burden, I feel like, for a lot of people. Um, But we're all adjusting as we go. Zach, uh, what you have done, and you and Julie done in the Earth Family Foundation is really remarkable. Um, Donating, you guys donated $100,000 from the foundation to fill abundance. Uh, Can you kind of tell me first, how it all started, your thought process, and and, um, and then obviously we'll get into how people can help. Yeah, I mean, I think um, when this whole virus thing started in this city and in this country, um, Julie and I really kind of exhausted avenues to determine what was the best course of action to help. Obviously, um, we were inspired by other athletes that started donating to local food banks um, or a relief fund. And so we did a lot of research in the city. Um, we came up with Phil Abundance was the partner that we wanted to partner with based on the history that, that they've had in the city, um, as well as the necessity of providing meals to people um, that this really snuck up on and took the meals from some of the kids in uh, schools. And so we just felt like after all the research we did, that partnering with Phil Abundance was going to make the biggest impact in the long run. What does one uh, – do you have any sort of um, understanding of the, the magnitude of $100,000? $100, like how many meals does that provide? How many kids does that impact? Do you have any idea of the, 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 the sheer numbers of that? So I do not know the exact numbers um, in terms – I'm sure I could calculate it out, I know, but I believe uh, $15 can feed a, family, feed a family of four for four days, and then $25 can feed a family of four for eight days. Um, so the dollar goes a long way um, in terms of partnering with Phil Abundance, which is why we felt that was the biggest impact area that we could have. That's awesome. And then Jason Kelsey, Connor Barwin has contributed. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's been huge. You know, our goal at the beginning of this thing, we, we wanted to kind of vet out the process for guys in case they wanted to join. Obviously, um, having Jason and Connor join was huge. Um, and it was varying amounts of money, and it was just we were so thankful that that they agreed with our mission and kind of our our, our vision for this thing. And I mean, I can't thank those guys enough for just continuing the conversation. Um, as athletes in the city, we we love playing here. We feel the love each and every Sunday we step on the field, but it's not reserved to 16 days out of the year. Um, we're a part of this community, and when our community struggles, like um, kind of the trying times that we're dealing with right now, we feel an obligation and um, love to help people in that regard. Zach, that's a great message. What, what The social distancing part, like where are you? Are you in Philly? Are you elsewhere? What, how are you getting through this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough, obviously. Julie and I are in Philadelphia. Uh, the best part, I wouldn't say the best part, the only good part in our eyes is Julie and I, this is the first time Julie and I have able to been together with no hard stop end date. Um, and so being able to be a quote unquote normal married couple has been a blessing. Um, and we're just really trying to uh, make the most of this time together. And so we're just trying to use this time to really connect with people. Um, obviously, everyone's kind of in the same circumstances. So we're able to hop on a FaceTime with some of our friends and family. Um, and really just uh, be deliberate in that regard. If I could ask you, Zach, um, for fans out there who are looking for ways to pass the time, um, is, are there any uh, recommendations from the Earth family on must-see TV or any sort of music that you're listening to? Oh, must-see TV during the time of the quarantine. Um, we have got back into Homeland, a great show on show. Um, the Office, of course, is a staple of the Earth family. Um, we love Monopoly Deal if people are into card games. Uh, uh, Julie's into Survivor. She wants me to make sure Survivor gets a shout-out right now. Um, and just trying to stay active. You know, I don't know if people saw that other day. Julie and I were able to do um, a yoga class in our living room, kind of, just on YouTube. So there are ways to stay fit, um, stay active. We just got to be deliberate in this thing. 
Um, and we're going to get through this. I mean, I know for a fact that we're going to get through this as, as a community, as a country. Um, and at the end of the day, we're going to be better for it. Zach, there's a show on Netflix that I just started watching last night. It's a British show. It's about the origin of the game of soccer. It's called, I think Interesting. it's called The Beautiful Game, I think it's called. And okay, I'll have like, to check that out. Yeah, it's like from the 1700s, I think. It's called The English Game. And the English real, game. The English game. And it's, you guys will love, and Julie, I mean, it's great. It's great stuff. And right. um, can you give me some draft memories? What What was your memory of being selected by the Philadelphia Eagles? Yeah, I mean, the draft memory, I remember it like yesterday. Um, obviously, it was, a, it was, I've been fortunate enough to be here my whole career. Draft day for me is almost eight years ago, which is freaking incredible. Um but it, it's a day I'll never forget. You know, Thursday happened. Thursday was the first round of the draft. Um, we thought there was a chance I would go there. Um, but I always knew the Eagles liked me. At the time, they had a really good tight end room, though, with Brent Selleck and James Casey just being signed there. But I played against Chip in college for four years, um, and I met with him at the combine, and he said, fetch me at the combine. You know, hopefully we'll be talking uh, the day after the draft. So Friday came. Um, and the Eagles had a 35th pick, so I knew it was a chance. And then the 35th pick came. I got a call from Howie and Chip, and they were just saying uh, we're excited that I was going to be a Philadelphia Eagle. I had my immediate family there, my trainer, my agent, um, and we were just so ecstatic to see that 215 number pop up. Uh, and it was, it was it, I will never forget it. It was kind of surreal, still thinking back about it. Zach, thank you so much for your time, man. Thanks for the great work, and uh, stay safe. All right, bud. See you, bud. Thanks, man. Take care. We finish up on the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group, with a position-by-position look at the team. We begin at the safety position. We've got a new segment here on the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. We're going to take a look at the Eagles position-by-position. And considering we had Will Parks on earlier in the show, why not begin at the safety position? I'm joined by Fran Duffy, host of Journey to the Draft podcast, as well as the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast. Fran, how are you? I'm great, Dave. How are you? Good, thank you. And Chris McPherson, also from the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast, Journey to the Draft podcast. You kind of do it all. We all work together here, guys. C-Mac, how you doing? Doing outstanding, guys. Miss you guys, to say the very least. So We are all working in remote locations, of course, uh, working with this cool little app. And, guys, I hope you're doing well with your families. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the safety position because we got very used to it with Malcolm Jenkins and with Rodney McLeod. They knew each other. They knew the scheme. We just took it for granted. And, you know, it's kind of – it would seem like every time that they would do a – they would bring the assistant coaches in, nobody had a, a much to say – to Tim Houck because it was such a stable <laughs> room. That has certainly changed. Uh, Chris, your thoughts on first Rodney McLeod and maybe a changing role in leadership in the locker room. Very important to bring back McLeod, Dave, because of the stability. You have the guy that can play the deep post. He's got the experience. He's got the respect within the locker room. You wrote a great column about the big change for him will be filling uh, that vocal leadership void that's been left by the departure of Malcolm Jenkins. Certainly that is going to be a big one to fill, but I think there are guys in the locker room, McLeod included, I would include Jalen Mills in that as well, who can fill that void there. Uh, Fran Duffy, you know, we talk about linebacker, quasi-linebacker, safety, the new, the new breed of safety, the Eagles potentially, and he has admitted it on social media, will take a look at Jalen Mills at that position, whatever it is. Can you explain in layman's terms what that means and, and why you think perhaps, and why the Eagles think, Jalen might be able to fit that bill? Well, I think in most cases, Dave, in most instances with some players, that would be a tough projection to make. That would be tough to say, man, like, all right, we're going to take this guy who's been an outside corner and we're going to move him to the safety spot. And more importantly, we're going to move him to down near the box and have him play in traffic and play against the run on a down-by-down basis. But when you look at Jalen Mills and how he was used going back to his career at LSU, we talked about this years ago back in 2016 on the Journey to the Draft podcast, was, man, Jalen Mills, 
He lined up at corner. He lined up at nickel. He lined up at safety his senior year. So whatever was asked of him for LSU, he was asked to do it, and he came through and he executed at a very high level. That was one of the best parts about him coming out of college. So I think when you look at Jalen Mills, he was here in Philadelphia in games, we've only seen him play that left corner spot. But, you know, in practice, they've used him in the spring, in the summer at times, on the inside. And now, potentially, will he be able to see that move now? He's got the skill set to do it. I mean, he's got the size. He's got the competitiveness. He's got the toughness. Certainly the willingness to come downhill and play in traffic and play against the run. We've seen him do all those things throughout the course of his career in Philadelphia on the corner spot. Now it's about doing it closer to the line of scrimmage, uh, closer to the middle of the field where there's a little bit more traffic, a little bit of obviously more bodies to contend with, something that he did at a high level at LSU. Now we see if he can do it uh, in the NFL. We saw him do it at the highest level of college football. It's a little bit easier, a little bit more comfortable of a projection to see if he could potentially do it now in the NFL. I think fans look at it and say, wait a minute, this defense, they gave up the most big plays in the NFL last year in the past game. It's all about coverage. And to that end, the Eagles not done at the safety position. They signed, well, they agreed to terms with Will Parks. Let's do that. The Eagles, they bring in Will Parks, Philadelphia native, Broncos veteran, knows the game, described as a versatile C-Mac. You have gotten to know Will Parks a bit, at least in the research that you've done and looked him up. I mean, it's going to take more than two safeties here. Is Will Parks, is it going to come down to Will Parks versus Jalen Mills, or is there enough playing time for everyone alongside Rodney McLeod and in that inside linebacker role? There could be three safety looks, and it's great that you have guys like Jalen, like Will Parks. Fran brought up a great point about with Jalen that I think he can do it. I think he can be that versatile defensive back who can play corner, can play safety, play that dime linebacker. But Parks has done it. It's not a projection with him. And being a Philly native, he understands what it means, what it's like to be in Philadelphia, to play in Philadelphia, and understands the the fan base and the attention that's going to come with that because that that's a factor, a very underrated factor. Not everyone can play and thrive in Philadelphia. So Parks knows that, you know, as he signed with the Eagles, and he told you earlier in the podcast, Dave, that it's the perfect situation coming to Philadelphia. So obviously you already know that he can play the versatile role, I think there's going to be plenty of snaps there to go around. It's not going to just be two back there the entire time. So with Parks, the big thing is going to be how will def- defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz utilize all these guys at the same time? I, I like the quote that he gave you in the interview where he said, we're not going to be sitting ducks back there, okay? We can be brought closer to the line of scrimmage. We can play the deep. We can play over a tight end, a running back coming out of the backfield in the pass game, you have to adjust to what defense or offenses are doing. Last point is he told you about the player he emulated growing up in Philadelphia. That's none other than Brian Dawkins. Brian Dawkins, you know, kind of paved the path for these versatile, you know, these multidimensional safeties. And that's the kind of role that Parks is going to have to fill in here going forward is someone that can do a little bit of everything. So it's great that you have someone who has done it in parks, who's coming off that first contract, still very young going on into his fifth season. But don't forget, there's also Avante Max as well. I mean, we're not just done here at safety just because you have McLeod in place. You have Jalen Mills in place. You have now Will Parks in place. You have Avante Max who did it in his rookie season, played both safety and corner. So Jim Schwartz has a lot of options at his disposal to try to work all these guys in. Cause I'm not just going to look at it as, okay, well, two or three corners and, you know, two or three safeties. These guys are going to have to be interchangeable throughout the course of the season. Yeah, and, you know, we, we can't forget Marcus Epps, who they brought in last year from Minnesota off of waivers. Rudy Ford, somebody who is an excellent gunner on special teams, also in the mix. And, I guess my point is I just hope it's not a case of like, hey, we, you know, how sometimes you say, oh, we've got three quarterbacks when you really don't have one. The Eagles want to take a look here, and and I don't think anything's settled at all. One-year contract for Mills, one-year contract for Parks. We don't know enough about Epps. We certainly don't know enough about Ford. Maddox, 
Probably his best position is in the slot, but Craven LeBlanc is there. So really interesting matchup. Fran, it is important, though, to note finally here that versatility really is the whole key as they cross-train all of these defensive backs. You took the words out of my mouth, Dave. I mean, a couple weeks ago on the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast, uh, myself, Greg Cosell at the Combine, feels like uh, months ago at this point, was really only like three weeks ago. Um, you know, we talked about positionless football and really just kind of where the league is at, both on offense and on defense. And in speaking about the secondary, I think you look at this Eagles defense and you look at Will Parks, you look at Jalen Mills, you look at Avante Maddox, all of these guys can wear different hats that can be used in a variety of different ways. And that gives you a lot of different cards to play if you're Jim Schwartz, uh, if you're Marquand Manuel, to be able to utilize these guys in a handful of different manners, depending on the week, depending on the game plan and the opponent. Uh, I think that that gives them really, I mean, it's good, it's good, it's a good thing to have, certainly, is that versatility. Um, you know, and look, uh, at the end of the day, all these guys are going to have roles to fill. Someone is going to settle in at the starting safety spot next to uh, next to Rodney McLeod. Someone is going to settle in at left corner. Someone's going to settle in at right corner. Someone's going to settle in at the nickel. But at the end of the day, having all of those guys be able to kind of you know chip in elsewhere, that's a, a huge huge positive for that group moving forward. And uh, it also to your point. It's also very early. I mean, we're what we're a week and a half into the new league year. Um, still plenty of off season left, so we'll see uh, what other pieces to the puzzle uh, Howie Roseman and this Eagles front office continue to add. All right, one word answer, guys, from each of you. C Mac, you're first. Would it shock you if the Eagles used a relatively high draft pick on a safety in April? No. Fran? Uh, no, definitely not. You are you are one word answer. We, we could elaborate on it, but it still wouldn't shock me whatsoever. <laughs> knowing how we Roseman, you never know. Guys, thanks so much for joining me on the Eagles Insider Podcast. Thanks so much. Many thanks to Will Parks, to Zach Ertz, to Fran Duffy, Chris McPherson for your contributions to today's show. Thanks to Peter Kelly for his production skills and Ray Doyle for also producing the show and promoting as well. Thanks to all of you for joining us on the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. I keep asking every day, and I feel bad doing it, but we'd love to get your five-star review. And I will start soliciting your questions. So take a look out for them on the social media channels at Eagles Insider. If you have a question for the show, I'm going to submit an area where you can ask a question, and we're going to have a little mailbag to have a little two-way conversation. So your input is greatly appreciated. Thanks for joining everyone. Eagles insider Dave Spadaro saying, have yourselves a great Eagles day. Fly, Eagles fly, and be healthy and safe. And let's everybody do our part. Thanks, everyone.